Hello and welcome to Lord of the Board. I really need some coffee. Here we go, just one moment. Coffee, folks. Let's learn to play Captain Hook. Hello and welcome to Lord of the Board. My name is Sam Smith and today we are going to be looking at Hook from the Disney Villainous board game. Now, Hook has kind of two main things that he has to do. He has to defeat Peter Pan, but he has to defeat Peter Pan at the Jolly Roger. Now, Peter Pan is located in your fate deck and in order to unlock Hangman's tree, you have to get the treasure map, which is in your villain deck. You're gonna have to search through both decks in order to complete Hook's mission and win the game. Now, we are going to be looking at his cards, we're gonna be looking at the four locations in his realm, and we are going to be looking at three tips and strategies on how to play him better today, which will help you in winning more games with the nefarious pirate, Captain Hook. So, without further ado, let's roll the video. The treasure map is going to be one of the most important things to find, along with finding Peter. So when you find the treasure map and play it, you're going to be unlocking the location on Hangman's Tree. But then it also has the secondary ability, which says that you can discard it for the next time that you play an item, you can play that card for free. You're going to want to either play an ingenious device if you don't already have that on the board. And then if you already have that on the board, then go ahead and play the cannon. Those are two items that cost two power. They're the most expensive items that you have at your disposal as hook. Basically, super simple. You get Smee, you play him on the Jolly Roger, you leave him there. That's a two power for a four strength ally. Really, really good. And he's already in the correct position to defeat Peter later. When you get the ingenious device, keep onto it because that is going to help you win the game a lot quicker once you have Peter on the board. If you cycle hook back between Hangman's Tree and whatever location you place the ingenious device on, you can move Peter once per turn. That makes the end victory condition go from a five turn win to a three turn win. That is incredible, folks. Keep onto the ingenious device and please do not let it get eaten up by that tick-tocking crocodile. Now, the reason why I bundled Worthy Opponent and Give Them a Scare together is that both cards help you dig through your fate deck. Now, that is going to be a very important mechanic with Hook because you're going to want to make sure that people are either fading you or you're fading yourself to get to Peter sooner. The sooner you get to Peter, the sooner you're gonna win the game. But that said, if you already have Peter on the board, these cards are kind of useless. So once you have Peter on the board, discard him, cycle through your deck. If you don't have Peter on the board, use him as soon as possible to get to Peter as quick as possible. Now, Obsession is a card that I might actually say to keep around as a condition. Usually, I say don't keep on to conditions because they usually take up your hand and you, you, know, you can get to better things in that time. But with this one, it is a good ability. I mean, if you don't have Peter on the board yet, you might want to keep on to it. But it will depend on the other villains that you're playing the game with because if they have a lot of low strength valued heroes, then obviously, you know, scrap it. Now the card I, I, Sir is going to be very, very great for those quick wins and that quick ending to your beautiful, masterful, evil plan of defeating Peter. If you use this on somebody at Skull Rock, you can get them to Peter and attack them with some extra strength and trick your opponents with an immediate victory. All right, so now that we have looked at some of his cards, let's go ahead and look at Captain Hook's realm. 
Now starting up with his baby, the Jolly Roger. The Jolly Roger has four locations. That's the power, the discardability, the vanquish action, and the play a card. This one is going to be great because it will be the only one that you're guaranteed to have a vanquish action on. This is also where you will have to defeat Peter, so you're going to want to try to keep this clear during the gameplay. You're going to want to be playing most of your allies at this location in preparation for Peter. So yeah, this location is pretty good and you're going to be wanting to use it quite often. Skull Rock is going to be the best location for Hook. You're going to be able to fate your opponent as well as collect a little bit of power. You can play one card and also discard some of the cards out of your hand. Hook is very heavy on relying on cycling through his deck, so being able to fate your opponents as well as cycle through the deck is going to be super beneficial for Hook. The Mermaid Lagoon is a great location to gain power as well as to play a lot of cards. There's no discard space on here, but to get rid by playing cards is just as efficient as discarding cards, as long as they're good cards to play, if that makes sense. All right, so Hangman's Tree is the last location in Hook's Realm, and this includes gaining two power, being able to play a fate card, as well as being able to move a hero, which is the single most important thing for Hook to do once Peter is revealed, as well as be able to play a card. Now, this location does start off locked, so you will have to find the treasure map before in order to use it. So. Ladies and gents, get searching for that treasure map at the beginning of the game. And now that we have looked at some of his cards, as well as the four locations in Hook's Realm, let's go ahead and go over three tips and strategies on how to play him better. Alrighty guys, so my first tip is to, one, whenever you draw cards, look at your hand and decide whether you actually need the cards in your hand. If you don't have any of the cards that I previously mentioned as important cards in Hook's deck, discard them, get rid of them. You need to be cycling through your deck to get to that treasure map as soon as possible. And with that, my second tip would be to play Hook as he is in the movie. Be obsessed with killing Peter Pan. You need to convince everybody that you have already won, that your board is already set up masterfully so that other players will fate you more. You need people to fate you. Be annoying, be obnoxious, be just like Hook in the movies. You gotta be, you gotta, you gotta really put on your best pirate face and just go, argh, argh, argh. And my third tip and strategy is to play the cannon card at a location with a move hero ability. This will mean that you can actually move Peter and vanquish him in the same turn. That will save you time as well as help you win the game out of nowhere. And it's gonna be awesome. You're gonna be the best hook player out there. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. This has been an absolute blast to make. And if you enjoyed this kind of content, please leave a like, as well as comment down below whether you think Ursula or Hook would win in a one versus one fight. I mean, we've got the Witch of the Sea, but as well as we've got the Pirate of the Sea. I mean, not to kind of put my coins anywhere, but Ursula did die by a ship once. I don't know. Jolly Roger's looking pretty pointy. I don't know. And if you want to see more content like this in the future and be warned when my next video is released, go ahead and click that bell notification. But with that, let's go ahead and drop the beat.